Absolutely beautiful. I love that song. Beyond That is the name of that song. Title track off the most recent release from Meg Hutchinson. Time right now is six minutes past the hour of four o'clock, and you're listening to WSCALP Portsmouth Community Radio. My name's Sean Henderson. Name of the show is Stay Tuned. Each and every week, I try to have live in studio guests come into the studio. And today, I'm lucky enough to have the uh, singer songwriter of that song live right here with me. Meg Hutchinson is joining me live in the studio. Hi, Meg. Great to be here. Nice to uh, nice to have you. Um, let's make sure I got you up there. Good. Um, nice to have you. <laughs> Good to be back. Wow, well, it's been nice. a while. It has been a while, and I was Steve was asking me if uh, if you'd ever been in the studio, and and the funny thing was, I, I was like, geez, I'm not sure if you've been here. Have you been live in the studio on my show? I've certainly well, worked I know with you before, but I'm trying to remember. Kenny Bunn Coffee House. You played at the Kenny Bunn Coffee House yeah. with Edie Carey. Yeah. Um, and I think, actually, I think you played there twice. Um, and I can't remember if you've ever been on the show. If you have, it's, it was a like long time I ago. Feel right. Like I have, but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, well, I remember in 2008 you came in and you did a great double bill with Edie Carey at the that Coffee House. Fun. That was a lot of fun. And uh, you did a great cover of Once. Uh, you guys did an awesome cover of that song at that show. I was uh, looking at that on YouTube just oh yeah? recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And that was it. that was shot with just a uh, little flip video camera. So that's right. Uh, so we've uh, we've expanded a bit. I see. We've got <laughs> a bunch of cameras. All right. So um, and we've got a good subject, so that works out well. So the cameras won't struggle um, like this one does. This one struggles a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Congratulations on the new album, by Thank the way. Thank you. Oh, Beyond That is the name of the album, and we just played that. And there's a couple of questions I want to ask right off the bat. Uh, first one is, is it, are you playing the lap? Is someone playing their lap? Duke Levine. Oh, Duke, Le Duke Levine is actually playing his lap on that. He As I was listening Yellow to Room. that song, I'm like, that's someone just playing his lap. I like that. On <laughs> Yellow Room he played. I don't know that he played on, uh, I'm trying to remember what he played on Beyond That, but mm -hmm. he did play on the record. He's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's a that is Duke is Duke is he's a master. Yeah, he is a master. <laughs> you just kind of want to bow when he walks into a room. <laughs> Absolutely, the guy is a genius, and I always tell this story. The first time I met Duke was uh, Kenny White introduced me to him, and he came to the coffee house and played with Kenny, and I was like a little schoolgirl, and I was like, Oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Some similar to how I greeted you when you came here today, <laughs> uh, but he is phenomenal. So that's great that uh, that he joined you on the album. And <clears throat> the other question I wanted to ask is: It seems like this whole. I just wanted to start with sort of the whole theme of the album. Maybe um, it's. Have you ever done a like an extended meditation retreat? I've done a month long retreat. Oh, month long. Okay, so that's um, that's an extended one. I'd I'd say. Um, it seems like this album could have been written while on one of those retreats. That's what, that's what I get. It you get it. You get the <laughs> record. <laughs> it, it almost seems like a dream to me in a way. I mean, it really does. It's, it's got a, such a great vibe. That's, <clears throat> that's exactly what I hoped for. I oh, wanted yeah? to Good. create. I spent a lot of the last three years um, walking around in the woods with my dog. Mm -hmm. I was told she only had like six months to live, and she lived four years. But ev in quality years, but mm -hmm. every day I thought, well, why not spend three hours in the woods? It might be her right. last week. You never know. And she gave me this tremendous gift in that, uh, slowing me down, and, and uh, it allowed me profound healing in my life on a much deeper level. Um, and I've been studying Buddhism for four years now. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to watch, if you start working with a foundation, how it affects the whole Everything, rest of right. your life and it's it's been a really peaceful and um and meditative time in my life mm -hmm. well that's fantastic what i want to do is well let's come back and we'll chat about that you can fill us in on on all of that if you if you can uh, it seems pretty big we'll do a group <laughs> uh, meditation all right that story. sounds really good <laughs> that'll work uh, over the air <laughs> that's right a moment of silence for the next 45 yeah minutes. <laughs> pull your car over if you're listening and so, reflect <laughs> so why don't we do something live and then we'll uh, we'll come back and chat about that how's that so i'm going to play yellow room and this is a song that that was inspired by a fascinating dream i had that i was getting on an amusement park ride and instead I got flung into space. 
and there I was. It was the opposite of that frightening movie, Gravity, that just came out with Sandra Bullock. It's terrifying. This is the opposite sort of dream, where suddenly I was just out there floating, and I turned and looked back at the Earth, and it was so incredibly beautiful. And in that moment, all the other things fell away, all those other worries. And, and I remember being struck by the fact that I hadn't spent more time contemplating <laughs> how phenomenal it is that we live on this little ball in the middle of infinite space. And from out there, uh, all of the arguments that we have here about who made us and whose God is better, all of that in the dream seemed so beside the point. And the love part was what made sense from out there. And then my alarm clock went off, and I was in Boston, and it was loud and terrible news coming through the radio. And, <clears throat> and I, uh, I turned it off, and I closed my eyes, and, and I promised to keep remembering that feeling I'd had from out there. Um, so the nice thing is I'm still pretty young. I can try to remember that for the rest of my yeah, life. So I, so I don't get surprised when I'm an old woman and I start thinking about the infinite universe. What a miracle, opposable thumbs, what a miracle. Walk in the yellow room on a city street, the noise of the morning, the rush and the heat. Too sad, not too happy, not missing anything, desireless and free for a moment. Clock radio breaking the still with a new death toll. Could this be the place I saw from space? It kind of sounds like hell. games of war, blood of the earth leaking out like oil, how strange it seems, suddenly stranger than my dream, than my dream, just enough water. Just enough light, the impossible chance in making life from jawless fish and flightless birds to opposable thumbs. What a miracle! Opposable thumbs. What a
Beautiful. <coughs> Meg Hutchins live in the WSCA studios. That was nice. Thank you. Very nice indeed. Uh, a song called Yellow Room. You can hear that off her brand new album called Beyond That. Um, I really like that a lot. Is that something... Um, well, tell me about your dream life then, if that's the... Because uh, that came to you in a dream. I mean, and that's what it's about, I guess. Um, so is that... Do you, do you mind your dreams much when, you, when you're writing songs? Is that something that... Or is that a first time? They've definitely had a real impact. One of the things that I've noticed um, that's been kind of extraordinary is that since I started a meditation practice, my dream life has shifted mm -hmm. in a very obvious way. It used to be that all the things I ignored all day long, mm -hmm. and perhaps decades at a time, at night, mm -hmm. you know, your mind is trying to categorize and sort, and it's just like this big messy desk where it's trying mm -hmm. to file all these emotional experiences you've had. And what I've learned is that if I devote time during the day to looking at that, then the night becomes this meditation experience. Mm -hmm. And the dreams slow down, and they stop. People stop morphing into scary monsters. Right. And I don't have nightmares anymore. And even the scary dreams, I find I don't react to them in the same way. So I don't wake up with that what I would call like a dream hangover that I used to have. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you wake up with this odd feeling and you don't even know why, you can't remember the dream, but you feel kind of haunted for mm -hmm. part of the day and you're trying to like do something, watch a movie, ignore what you're feeling. And, and instead I've been having dreams kind of like the yellow room one. I, recently I had a dream where I was lying on my back watching snowflakes fall. Mm -hmm. And I could see the individual snowflakes how can you That's not fantastic. wake up from a dream yeah. like that just feeling <laughs> so so renewed right. and, and when you really think about it we spend maybe a third of our lifetime sleeping Absolutely. so if we can look at the scary stuff during the day and work through it then the night becomes this restorative place for us instead of the opposite kind of messy filing business right. that do it you used find to you be. remember your dreams more now I do, and mm -hmm. I can go through periods where I really, the more I write them down when I first mm -hmm. wake up, the more I kind of welcome them and, and remember them longer. Um, so it's fascinating. I've yeah. been reading about lucid dreaming. I've been very curious about... Um, to see if you can do it or... Yeah, there are many people mm -hmm. who can kind of wake up within the dream, and, and if you can do that, then you can practice waking up within your life. Right. Just Ooh, I like that. pretty fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I'm trying. I'm still trying to wake up in my life. Um, well, that's good. I like that. So, well, that's that seems. I'm a, I'm fascinated by dreams, I, and I love dreams, and um, they are. And I even like the I even like the scary ones. Really? You know? Well, I just like them all in the sense that um, you know that it can teach you. I, mm -hmm. I've never shied away from them. Put it that way. Right. You know, um, and you know sometimes the scarier the better. It 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 kind of Wait, it really does wake you up. It almost shocks you awake in the <laughs> dream. Um, but I really like, I, I, I would much rather wake up from a dream like that, you know, or both of those dreams, actually. I like, this, I like the uh, snowflake one as well. Um, I'd much rather wake up. But I think you need to change your alarm. If that's the case, <laughs> I have actually. I have <laughs> because that just is just too. No, you, know, you can't wake up with that kind of no, jarring. No, <laughs> no, it's a nice little ringtone on my phone. Oh, now. good. Do you have a smartphone? I've yeah. always wanted to get one of those Zen alarm clocks. Have you ever heard of those? I have. I don't have one. I though. don't. Well, they, I think you can download the app. That's the reason I say that. I always oh. use. I always use that. I always use my. I don't have a smartphone, but I use my phone as an alarm clock. That's a great um, idea. But I've always like, oh, you can just download the app for free. That's a great uh, idea. I'm so going to do you know. that right <laughs> after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Time right now is 21 minutes past the hour of 4 o'clock. We're live in the studio with Meg Hutchinson. And she's performing tonight over at the Portsmouth Book and Bar. She has a brand new album out called Beyond That. So uh, she still has her piano in front of her. So we're going to do another song. How's that? Yeah, I'm going to play When the Lights Went Down. Uh, this is a song inspired by one of my musical heroes after spending some time on tour with her and recognizing that the lifestyle I might have once dreamed I wanted comes with a whole lot mm. of other pain and I think finding fame is often wrought with turmoil and um, and personal pain and and I think often the creative people who start out with that artistic longing and hunger are, are also very easily pulled into alcohol and Absolutely, drugs yeah. and, and all these other things it's that same appetite um, 
And so I, it was really, for me, this song was a love song to, to my hero and, uh, and also recognition that at a certain point in my life I started making a choice, that choice to be out in the woods with mm -hmm. the dog nice. instead of pushing myself so hard that I would need to have three di drinks after the show and uh -huh. one drink before the show. And, and um, that choice to, to try to actually care for myself and, and uh, at a certain point realizing that my idea of success is, is different from what I used to think it would mm -hmm. be. So it's called When the Lights Went Down. Fantastic. When the lights go down, is the name of that song. Again, Meg Hutchinson live at the WSCA studios. You can hear, uh, hear that off her brand new release called Beyond That. That's uh, 
that was one of the first songs that stood out to me. This album has a, it has a, um, <clears throat> it has a life to it in a way that um, it it grabs you in different ways over different times. For me, anyway, this is just my, you know, um, and you definitely have to be in a space, a certain mm. space to listen to it. And um, that song, when I first got the album, when I first started listening to it, that's the song that first stood out to me for some reason. You know, probably the, uh, you know, the. Uh, tortured rock star type thing <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly um but then later the more i listened to it more songs kind of more songs kind of grabbed me and in the sound um the sonic kind of energy of this album <clears throat> is another dreamlight state excuse me i think um so i would just wanted to go into that as far as the production a little bit um because it really is uh it's amazing uh, don't you do you tell me what your relationship is to the sound because it, it's 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 an amazing soundscape of music thank you Does that, i mean sorry, i still i still <laughs> turn it on in the car and listen okay. to it because it's a world that i lived in mm -hmm. for the last year and i love that world and um and i i had the great fortune of working with crit Harmon, mm -hmm. who's been my producer on three previous records so we have a great rapport deep respect for each other, understanding of how to push each other in the right ways. Um, and I'd always loved David Gray's White Ladder. Mm -hmm. I loved that pulse underneath the slightly modern feel, and then the huge sweeping arc, and then intimate words that you still felt really close to him, but there was this big sky behind mm -hmm. it, and things bubbling and burbling underneath. That's and, a good way to put it, yeah, I like it. So Crit and I talked about that for a while, and on this record we had a new process. I had learned how to run Pro Tools software, uh -huh. so I kind of okay. geeked out. Right. When I wasn't in the forest <laughs> with the dog, I was kind of geeking out, yeah. and I was pretty psyched because there weren't there aren't many chicks that, that mm -hmm. bothered to learn that <laughs> stuff, at least that I know. Um, I recently said, yeah, I used to call the uh, the helpline for the for the software program, and I'd ask them, you know, how many women called this week? And they'd be like, oh, you're one of the only ones. And I was telling a friend that recently, and she said, well, it's because all the other women already knew how to use it. <laughs> but anyway, that's a tangent. But um, what was really fun for me is I did all the piano recording at my house mm. and all the vocal recording at my house and turned my closet into a vocal booth. And what that meant was that I could sing the song when I most wanted to. Mm -hmm. And if that meant four in the morning, get up, I'm in my pajamas, go into the closet, right. press record. And, I, and it allowed me to be in the song space more organically than I've ever gotten to. Mm -hmm. Because usually you schedule studio time and you're like, today we're going to do the, the final vocals on these two songs. Maybe it's noon, maybe I'm half awake, maybe... Right. You know, it's hard to get into that zone. So there's something magical that happened. Um, Crit and I are both... Um, hermits by nature. We love that introverted, mm -hmm. and so we both go into our little magic place, and then we get together and say, "Well, where, where did you feel the song was going?" And and uh, because we trust each other so much, we were able to be like, "Oh, that's a terrible idea." <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was really really special on this record. And and I, sometimes I feel like the fewer chefs in the kitchen, the more magic can happen. Oh, absolutely. Because you can go all the way down into these ideas and and really sit with them. And, and Crit's just a master of geometry. You know, he mm -hmm. spends an exorbitant amount of time thinking about the pieces and knowing what to take away again. Mm -hmm. He's not a fan of piling up. He's a fan of, okay, what's the, each each strand being weight-bearing within, within the production and mm -hmm. each thing having a clear role. And he's a master. I That's why I keep working with him. Right. I'm like, well, I could try something else, but I still like listening to my old records. Mm -hmm. So well, that's a good sign. Absolutely. Your old albums are great. Um, and I've, uh, you know, I've been a big fan since uh, The Crossing, I guess. That's the first album. And I didn't even realize I was reading something today. Uh, what was the name of your first album? The uh, very first one? Yeah. So, when I was 17. I had one that was just Meg Hutchinson. Oh yeah, okay. I've never it's heard that one. Scary. But there's something about was it uh, <laughs> against the gray against was the, the next gray. one. Okay. Yeah, that was when I was um, like 19, I think. Okay, uh, and that got nominated for a Boston Music Award, but yeah. I was like, geez, I've never even heard of that album. Yeah, um, it's it's out of print at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, and now I'm getting off on a tangent. But <laughs> uh, I what what was I going to say about? Uh, I've been a big fan, and, and the work you've worked with Crit um, over those years has, has been fantastic. I love all those albums, but this is just it is so. Um, it's beyond. You guys have gone different places, for sure. 
um, you know, and I mean that in a, in a huge compliment, you know. And I, when you say that you 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 sang whenever you wanted to sing, I mean it makes total sense to me because um, when I was saying at the beginning, it, it almost seems like a dream. Mm -hmm. This album really does seem like a dream to me when I listen to it. When I can get into that space, um, and we were talking about dreams earlier, so it really does. Now it, it actually has a little bit more umph to it in my mm. in my heart when I think about when I think about that you know so sort of waking up to to that song or whatever the song may be whatever you were singing you know what I mean um, so was there any surprises as far as I mean you play the piano parts and the vocals uh, it's got a it's got it's got a big sound, but like you said, he stripped back a lot of stuff, too. It's, yeah, we know. did a lot of synth programming, mm -hmm. and I got to play with that, too, which was really fun. Yeah. And, like, you have to control yourself because you fall in love with the sound, right. and then you're like, that's a great sound, <laughs> but it doesn't belong on the record. And we had to keep braining ourselves mm -hmm. in with all our new toys. Right. But that was also super fun to be able to pick out melody lines um, and, and do a lot of it ourselves. And, and the goal was really to push each other into a new soundscape. Mm -hmm. I felt like the emotional material of the record was different from mm -hmm. the two records Definitely. before i was yeah. going through some pretty heavy stuff and mm -hmm. those were like th that was this one i wanted to feel like a celebration and i wanted the treatment of the songs to feel different mm -hmm. and put you into a, a different landscape than the past two records right you definitely um, do that for so sure. good yeah I'm glad. I think, you know <laughs> that's my my experience anyway i'm glad we didn't scare you some of the hardcore folk DJs have been like, oh, there's sounds in here. We don't know what they are. Right. <laughs> no, we I can't play it. It's a piano <laughs> record. And I'm going, I, always, I play anything by, by whatever it makes me feel, you know, for the most part. It doesn't even, I mean, it can, it can be anything almost, you know, as long as I'm, if it, if it resonates with me, then I'll play it, you know. So, yeah, so good for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, time right now is 434. I feel like I could talk about all this for a, a long time, but we only have uh, we only have like 25 more minutes, and I want to get some more live stuff in. So, um, why don't we play another song, and sure. um, then we can come back. And I want to talk to you about your documentary. You said you were working on a documentary, yeah. so I definitely want to chat about that as well. Okay. Um, so one of the other big themes I feel like on the record is is the theme of desire, not just romantic desire, but how our culture is really programmed to constantly want something right. constantly feel like we need a bigger house and more money and a better job and a and a more attractive partner it's just like this ongoing thing that the pursuit of happiness is running over us mm -hmm. it's like actually not making us happier um, but I play with that theme in several different ways um, on this record and and what what can you do with that energy that's actually really positive you know um, so um, this is one more, more towards the romantic side of it, but it's called Turned to You. I turned to you and said, what life are we on? I turned to you and the sun poured down. I turned to you. I turned to you and we slipped out of time. I turned to you and the boats went by. I turned to you. I think we were young then, I think it was May. I know I drank you in, every time you looked away. You better run from me, my words of fire. You better run from me, my words of fire. You better run straight at me, better run straight at me, better run straight at me, till I disappear. This time around, we're a lovely form. This time around, we're a man and a woman. This time around, you've been my mother and my brother, my child and my friend. But this is the life we might get to transcend. Straight at me, better run. Straight at me, better run. Straight at me till I disappear. You better run straight at me. Better run straight at me. Better run straight at me till I disappear. If you are. 
to use the name of that song meg hutchinson live in the wsca studios i love that song i just thank love you. the whole uh i just i love everything about it <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> um you uh i know i said i wanted to talk about the the uh, documentary but you said you started studying buddhism four years ago yeah and uh, how did that come about it was very interesting i i had always been curious about about Buddhism and um, <coughs> I sat with my grandmother while she was dying mm -hmm. in 2005 and she had a magnificent death. She was so happy and so at peace with her life mm -hmm. and she treated it like a birth and it changed was my whole life. Was she always that way? Uh, yeah, she was a pretty optimistic yeah, lady. Nice. Um, and it completely altered the way I felt about what happens next. Mm -hmm. and. She left behind a book next to her favorite reading chair, which was the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying mm -hmm. by Sogyal Rinpoche. And, and, you know, various family members wanted other things in the house. And I was just like, I'll take oh, the, the book. book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I took it home and I read it. And uh, my heart was so filled with awe about her, her passing. And I thought, well, if this is the book she was reading right before she pulled that off, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to read it. <laughs> and... Um, and I had been walking past a Buddhist monk on a path near my house for a number of years. And I'd always wanted to say hi. I felt this huge wave of peace every time mm -hmm. I walked by him. But I was too shy. I mean, what do you, what do you say? You know, yeah. hi. <laughs> um, That's what you say, pretty and much. And <laughs> then in 2006, I went through a really, really tough period in my life um, and was diagnosed with bipolar and was very, very low. Um, and that also, in retrospect, was a huge blessing, but it, it was a small death within my life. And, mm -hmm. and I came back to Boston after that experience. Um, I had gone out to the Berkshires to my family to get help and came back after that hell summer that I like to call. <laughs> and once again started passing the monk on the path. And a little while later, a friend invited me out to dinner with a Tibetan Lama. And I walked in and it was that same monk. Wow. <laughs> And I thought, well, now I'm ready, right. you know, now I'm absolutely ready to study because I was very interested in, um, in understanding. I mean, Buddhism is really a science of the mind. And what I had discovered in that dark time in my life was that there was an illness of the brain happening, but my mind, which mm -hmm. we could call the soul, spirit, heart, whatever your tradition is, in Buddhism, the mind is, is located in the heart area and it is your consciousness. And, and I felt that that had remained very strong through my experience even though my brain was being compromised. Right. So I thought, I want to learn more about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's how it came about. And it's been that's a- That's fantastic, what a, a great story. Been a really, really powerful shift um, in my life and in my So priorities. are you studying with that, Lana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, that's like classic, you know? <laughs> 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 really. Um, where, you know, the, the, you walk by your teacher every mm -hmm. single day for, you know, whatever long it's been, and then all of a sudden, you know, he pops up at lunch, you know. Then you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That is fantastic. Well, good for you. That is such a great Thank story. Thank you. It's um, given me so much 
more respect for people's faith in general, mm -hmm. whatever their tradition whatever it is. is. It's deepened what did my you respect. Come, what, was your, what was your foundational faith? Uh, my parents were really open-minded. They mm -hmm. sent us to a Waldorf school, so there was some kind of anthroposophy um, Christian thing happening. Mm -hmm. I, like I went to Christian camp as a kid, but there was never any pressure on us. Right. And they always felt that we should find our belief system on our own and that oh, they would nice. support it. And they're very spiritual people, so it was kind of, there was always an idea that you have an inner life mm -hmm. and that you can cultivate it. And um, and so it makes sense. My mom's in a Unitarian church now mm -hmm. and comes to some of the Buddhist events with me. And, and, uh, and there's always been a feeling in my family that nature is a deeply spiritual mm -hmm. place. So growing up in the branches, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it makes sense, I think, that I was open to this. Right. Well, that's that's good. Fantastic. Good for you. Um, well, I could talk about that forever too. Was that? Uh, <laughs> um, you, we talked about the documentary. I want I want you to. Have, I want a little easy for me to say. I'd like you to do another song, and then <laughs> yeah, uh, it sounds like the documentary from what we were talking about off off camera and off uh, mic was. Uh, built around that is that is that yeah true? certainly around the mental health theme okay so all right so let's uh if we can do one more song then we can come back and chat about that a little bit do sure you mind? yeah two, so are we going to do two more songs or sure okay great that's good just have to choose between my right. children here i'll try a guitar song since right. i brought this thing nice um <clears throat> This is one that I, that I wrote in that same um, place that I love, the same set of lakes that I love, but I wrote it when I was not yet in the peaceful chapter. <laughs> uh, but I was envisioning that that was up ahead and, and um, getting enough guitar over there. Oh yeah, Great. Yeah. It's called Seeing Stars. Bugs out on the water make it look like rain. Leaves on every tree once again turn in summer's past. But it's never far if you look real close. You might see scars for me. Yeah, me, I'm only seeing stars. gold moon rising up even this light you might see scars for me yeah me I'm only seeing stars they take everything and you've got nothing left a deer in the headlights in your hospital bed chest Dreaming of a, a simple life, a gentle man, a, a solid night. Me and the dog down at the reservoir. If you look real close, you might see scars for me. Yeah, me, I'm only seeing stars. Fantastic. A song called Seeing Stars. That was Meg Hutchinson live in the WSCA studios. That was off her um, 
<clears throat> Come Up Full album that came out, uh, her debut on Red House Records. Um, you're still on Red House. I am, yeah. And uh, how's that going for you? Is that a good, good relationship? My, yeah. my third record. And, and what I really love about them is that they are fans of writers. You know, mm. if you look at their roster, they have people like Greg Brown and John Gorka and Lucy Kaplansky, Eliza Gilkison, who really care about words. Absolutely. So that's what led me to them. Nice. Um, well, that's a great label, and we're big supporters of them and, and big supporters of you, by the way. Uh, we're live in the studio with Meg Hutchins, and I wanted to talk about your documentary. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell me about that. You said it has to do with, um, well, tell me how it was born. Just tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, so it's unfolded in this wonderful way where um, Todd Quaite and Ezzy Films did a documentary on Club Passim, mm -hmm. which is the famous old folk club in, in Cambridge in Boston that um, started as Club 47 mm -hmm. and has been around, you know, seen the likes of Joan Baez and Bob Dylan grow mm -hmm. up there. and. So he did a, a great documentary on that, and in part of the documentary they wanted to show the new artists that had mm -hmm. come through and, and been raised in the club. So I got to appear briefly with Ancha Duvacot uh, in that film. Oh, nice. And, uh, and I remember going out to the trailer where Rob Stegman and Todd Quaite were working and I said, can I just sit in here while, mm -hmm. while you're editing and, and filming? Because I've always wanted to, to work with film. Mm -hmm. I've always just watched documentaries. Um, and and we just struck up a, a correspondence and I said, hey, if you ever need someone on a project, you know, let me know. And then he started following my other work and he realized all the stuff I was doing with mental health advocacy work and I've been going around the country speaking um, and, uh, and being cho choosing to be really open about my experience because when I went through it, I didn't feel like there were many mm. Role models. There weren't many young people that were saying, "Yeah, this is really scary, but your life is going to be richer on the other side of it, and you're going to be fine." And I didn't have that. You know, we still have so much stigma, I feel, right. in this country around it. Um, so I started mm -hmm. speaking out, and and uh, and this past year, Todd said, "Well, I think I think we should make a documentary told through the lens of your story, but where we go and we interview." people in all these different fields related to what we're talking about and uh, and not just my own story but what can we do culturally to mm -hmm. change the way we're treating this and and what are the ways that people have found are, are healing them um, so we have this great dream list of people that we're going to interview between poets and scientists and people that are doing MRIs of monks to show the plasticity of the brain mm -hmm. and people who are teaching yoga in prisons and really giving people an opportunity to heal. Um, so if it all comes together with all of our all-star cast, <laughs> it will be, it'll be phenomenal regardless. Yeah, well, um, it sounds it. But it's, we've just gotten permission to oh, okay. call the film Pack Up Your Sorrows, which is taken from that old um, Richard Farina song, mm -hmm. If Somehow I Could Pack Up Your Sorrows, You Could Pack Up Your Sorrows and Give Them All to Me. You would lose them. I know how to use them. Give them all to me. And that's a song that I fell in love with when I was eight years mm -hmm. old that has come to kind of define both what I hope music can do for someone, what I hope the mental health work can do, and what I feel any spiritual person is trying to do in the right. world, is trying to alleviate sorrow in, in some small way, you know. So that song holds it all together. Right on. Well, good for you. So you haven't really started. I mean, you just got permission to use the title. Um, and you made your dream list. Have you, where, where else, I mean, have you gone any further than that as far as the uh, concept of it? Or? Yeah, we did our first week of filming in October. Oh, you did, good. Um, and spent a lot, a lot of time out in the Berkshires setting the stage for my mm -hmm. own, just kind of introducing me as the narrator and interviewing my family, interviewing um, a, a woman who runs an amazing community out there called Gould Farm that gives people a place to, to nice. recover. And, um, and next, uh, one of the important people that we're going to interview is um, Kevin Briggs, who I wrote a song, Gatekeeper, mm -hmm. for. And he is, has been a patrolman on the Golden Gate Bridge for 23 years. He just retired in November. And he's saved hundreds and hundreds of people from jumping. So um, that's going to be a very powerful wow. moment. Mm -hmm. We've done a joint interview together, but we haven't met. So we're going to meet in California on film. Uh, we've become really close friends. He, wow. I wrote his song 10 years ago, yep. and he heard it last year out of the blue and sent me a letter. And no we've kidding. become really good friends. So. That's fantastic. So it'll be people like that that right. are doing that work, you know, quiet heroes that are changing the face of how we 
Uh, good for How you. How we treat these issues. Mm. So. Well, you're an inspiration. I Thank tell you. you that. Seriously, <laughs> uh, I think it's I think it's brilliant work. I mean, best of luck on that. Thank and you. Um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to see it. <laughs> so, what do you think? I mean, it's it sounds like a grand project and. Uh, um, I don't know how fast those things work generally, and I don't know how you pay for it. <laughs> That's another thing. But uh, um, do, you have a, do you have an end set in mind when it's going to be done and released? Yeah, luckily the film's well funded already, oh, so we're in good, good shape. How did that happen? Um, private oh, funding, yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, and it's being, um, we're aiming to stop filming by midsummer, mm -hmm. and we're aiming to finish editing by the end of next year. So um, that puts us in pretty good shape. They yeah. just, Ezzy Films just finished a big Tom Rush documentary. Right. So I know that got recognition in, in, uh, at a film festival in New Hampshire. And yeah, we, well, we have the Portsmouth Film Festival here. So yeah. it would be great to uh, yeah. get it in there because that air, that it's in October here. In, I, in think it would, I think they just screened it during this past. They did, yeah. yeah. They, Tom Rush's one you yeah. talked about, yeah. But I'm yeah. talking about your film. It would be great to be able to get your right. film in, uh, in our Portsmouth, our little Portsmouth. Uh, film fest that'd be nice that would be All great right, we'll see what we can do about that time right now is about eight minutes before the hour we're live in the studio with meg hutchinson um it's been an absolute pleasure talking to Thank you i gotta you. tell you that um we have time for one last thing if you want to do something for us and yeah do i have time to read a short poem sure. before this absolutely song? yeah oh that'd be great I put out a book of poetry this past year and um this final song is about reclaiming the present moment mm -hmm. so i thought i'd read a poem that very much relates to that nice it's called yesterday I met a woman once from India. I drank tea with her in an airport Hilton lobby. She told me of her awakening when she was nine years old. One night in bed beside her sisters, she realized she could remember yesterday. She burst into tears. The thought of yesterday had never even occurred to her. If there was one yesterday, there would be more. The weight of all the future yesterdays began to bear down on her slender frame she wept in earnest and clutched at the wall all night long, heartbroken at this exile from the moment. Looking back down the pale street of my yesterdays, I also feel a terror sometimes. The days are piled high, a library ransacked by time, misplaced, out of order, covers gone. Some have whole pages missing or torn, others someone cruel has written on. And in one corner, Yesterdays that were so long, I couldn't even finish them. I used to think I'd have to get the whole place in shape before I'd be given back today. It's not like that. You could spend a lifetime rearranging them. Better just to give them all away. Brilliant. And I'll leave you with this one. This is called Everything More Beautiful. And I close out the new record with this song and what I noticed is the quieter I became in these past years on my walks with the dog, the more beautiful the lake started to be and the more beautiful the trees seemed and the sky was reflecting and it, it all just became more beautiful than it ever had. And then I realized that it had always been that beautiful <laughs> and that I had just been too busy with my own noise and inner chatter and pain to notice it. So my goal for the rest of my life is to keep getting quieter and keep really noticing what an extraordinary place it is that we live. The moon so fast, the clouds so still, cracked like silver mud. Are the tiles of that old church ceiling Slept under when I was young Come to think of it, the leaves are stirring in a sermon Swans out on the mystic, other moons Asleep between their wings And everything more beautiful Everything more beautiful, everything more beautiful, the quieter I become. Many 
birth the world gives us water egg womb and the miraculous what once were lost years seem a blessing to me now deepened by the blade of sorrow prepared my body for this greater love Prism all these colors on the ground. I climbed into that light and I just lay down everything. 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 Ah. Everything more beautiful. Meg Hutchinson live in the WSEA studios. That was nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming in tonight. Um, Meg is performing tonight over at uh, the Booking Bar right here in Portsmouth. I encourage you, if you liked what you heard here today, I encourage you to go on over there and um, check her out tonight. Pick up her new album, Beyond That. It's the name of the album. That's what it looks like for the people at home. Um, great new disc. And MegHutchinson.com, if you want to learn more about her, I encourage you to check that out and everything she's doing. It's been a blast. Thank I mean, you so much. Seriously, I can't thank you enough for coming thank in. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to go into, um, to go into this, uh, another song off the disc because Democracy Now! is coming up next. But I do want to thank you for coming in. Steve, I want to thank you for uh, being such a great guy. And uh, Ronnie over here, I do want to thank Ronnie for coming in and just barging in and being Thanks. completely obtrusive. And uh, <laughs> He's a super fan. He, he really loves you. So we, we appreciate him being in the studio. Very positive energy coming <laughs> from that corner. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm going to turn you over to Democracy Now! Now, uh, Democracy Now! right now. Um, I'll be back here next week, as I always am. Next week I have the Digbys live in the studio. But until then, be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I'll see you back here next Friday.
was awesome, guys. Holy crap. <laughs>